Hello Korean tapes lovers and welcome to K tapes once again. Today we're gonna have a look at a batch of films that I purchased uh, just last week. So as you can see right here I have like three very nice piles. Uh, about 50 tapes I must say, or maybe 50, 48 tapes. Uh, so we're gonna go through this and since it's gonna take a while might as well start right now. So let's go. I get like two, two or three little um, small cases, which is quite unusual because as I told you previously, uh, those small boxes used to be like the first releases back in, let's say 1982, 83, up until mid or uh, should I say mid eighties, maybe 87. So right before the Korean Olympics, which was in back in 1988. Uh, so those small cases are very rare, so to speak. Um, just like you can see right here, Life, uh, this label, they released also bigger uh, cases. And yeah, those are usually the first releases. Let me show you like for an example, um, right here once again, just change the camera so you can see right here this is again a life uh, and they have like right behind it those are like the uh, larger cases and this is a small one so the first thing we have today um, this is uh, Mr. Detman it's uh, I believe a black exploitation not too big on black exploitation I don't know them very much I mean I know the classics but like this one is maybe like a lesser known title if it's not I'm sorry for my uh, lack of knowledge right here <clears throat> but this tape is quite rare because it's a small box um, and it was a bit damaged like because this was from under the bed like if you saw my previous video uh, you may uh, maybe you recognized it on a pile somewhere uh, but this tape uh, because of humidity uh, the top part was sort of fused like the plastic and uh, the paper were fused so when I removed it and actually I changed the, um, uh, the case uh, for a cleaner one so it ripped off part of the, of the cover right here unfortunately and also on the front here thankfully the title remained but hey, it is what it is nonetheless this is very rare um, very happy to have found this tape Next, we have another one, another small case. This one I already have it. I think I showed it to you previously. Uh, so I have the big box and I do have now the small box. So this is the small case. It's the same label, uh, Fine, it's, uh, the name of the label. So I do have both copies. And um, actually they do not differ in, in the cover. Sometimes, you know, like when you go with the small cases, What's cool is they have a different artwork, uh, but in this case, for this movie, it's the same as the big case. Uh, I do not think there's any differences. Maybe on the back, uh, but you know, the front is exactly the same. All right, let's move on to the next one. Here, uh, this is a, um, a Turkish film. I believe a Turkish mystery action film. I do not know this film, by the way. It's called, uh, I'm not even gonna, say the title because I'm, I don't know, <laughs> I can't, I don't want to, you know, massacre the, the name. So anyway, this, uh, this movie seems to be fairly rare. I looked it up a little bit on IMDb and stuff, but I didn't find any like other releases. Maybe there's probably a Turkish release of this, but hey, there's a South Korean one. Looks fun, to be honest. Okay, next. Uh, this is another movie I grabbed previously, although uh, I can't tell if this one is better than my previous copy. They were pretty much both the same I mean, uh, quality. They both look pretty clean, although my previous copy, I think the case, the casing was, uh, was like ripped on the front, like right here. This one is clean. Anyway, uh, sword. Uh, Barbarian film, pretty cool. Okay, what do we have next? Okay, let's go on the top of the pile. This is rare, by the way. I, th I think it's the first time I ever see this. Uh, Cemetery Massacre. 
uh, came out on the CNC label. Uh, CNC label, they have uh, they have a whole bunch of films. Um, I mean, all labels do have a bunch of films released. Duh. Uh, but this one goes from like action, Hong Kong films, and they even have like erotic films. So they they do the whole the whole thing. So this is more like a horror film, um, action horror. So there you have it. Cemetery Massacre. Next, speaking of erotica, <laughs> I picked this one up. So maybe most of you will be like, what the hell is this? Uh, not really interesting for maybe most of you. Maybe you're more into the kung fu, the horror films, which is why I pick up those films usually. Um, but this will go in my kind of erotica collection. Uh, the great thing about this film, first of all, it's Korean. It looks Russian all the way and that's the purpose of of course the artwork on the cover I'll show you the back it's not too racy uh, nothing too uh, non YouTube friendly right here uh, so it's an erotic Korean film shot in Russia and even the main actor the, the Korean guy in the film the hero let's say uh, speaks Russian so the whole film is in Russian and it's subtitled in Korean uh, so it's a very like uh, it's an oddball of a film for Korean erotica film history, let's say. So I was really happy to grab this one up. Um, I just want to say I had the cover before because I purchased this film like in a store. Uh, the cover was all like beat up, but it was such a like rare film. I picked it up anyway, and the tape was missing <laughs> so I only had like the cover so I was really looking forward to find a copy of this one and I did so really happy about this one the next one <clears throat> some kung fu film don't ask me what it is I don't know if you do know what it is please comment down below uh, maybe you can uh, you can let us know what this film is because I know most of you uh, or at least some of you are really into the kung fu uh, scene so maybe you know these films better than I do um, but anyway it's the Aju um, label and Aju always come up with some really cool titles most of the time so I picked this one up next another Korean erotica uh, my friend told me to pick it up because I thought it was more like a sappy drama or something but apparently the uh, the main actress here used to be very popular back in the uh, early 90s late 80s in Korean erotic films so um, anyway it caught my attention the, ta the tape wasn't too expensive so I grabbed this one next um, another uh, another Hong Kong maybe mainland China perhaps even Taiwanese, who knows, uh, film, I think it's Taiwanese, um, forgot the title, someone told me before, and, and I think I even have like another copy somewhere in my, my stuff right here, uh, I forgot, uh, but anyway, it's, it's a rare film, in Korea at least, um, so I grabbed this one, okay, let's move this, Okay, next day hey, we have um, Oasis of Zombies, um, Zombie Oasis. This is a Jess Franco film. Uh, as you can see, the spine is sadly faded, sun faded. Uh, the rest of the tape looks pretty neat, pretty neat. Um, this was under the mattress, by the way, so I grabbed it. Uh, very, uh, very rare film right now. I found like only a handful of copies of this film. I would, must say maybe less than five or maybe four copies overall, including a friend of mine who got one as well. So maybe four or five copies, maybe six copies with this one, uh, you know, somewhere around in people's collections, but nonetheless, a very rare film. Next one, I don't know what that is. I totally forgot. It's a um, it's a comedy, um, romantic comedy. Uh, and again, since I'm terrible with names, um, you may recognize this actor right here. This guy um, with the eagle tattoo. Jeez. <laughs> Those of you who are very good in <laughs> Hong Kong film might be like, oh my god, how can you not know this guy? Michael Chan? I think, anyways. 
Uh, it's a movie with him, so I grabbed it. And it's a tape I think I've never seen before. If I did, I probably passed it on because there was nothing interesting for me, but I grabbed it this time around. Next one, another Korean erotica. Uh, nothing special uh, except for me. Uh, I do check for some uh, early 90s Korean erotica because they're hard to find. And as I said previously, they're not re-released on DVD or Blu-ray. So that's the only way to get your hands on those films. And forget about torrents, like there's no torrents about these movies at all. Unless you check maybe on Korean websites, some of them may surface, but in terrible condition. Um, like small files, like 200 megs, and it's barely watchable. Anyway, so I grabbed that one. Next, um, this is interesting also. It looks like a full fledged action film, Korean action film with you know the sword, the hero, the sunglasses, the chick with leather pants. What's not like what's not to like about this film, right? Uh, well, it's a I think it's a cross match between um. An erotica, Korean erotica, and action flick. As you can see, it's some action scenes right here, some uh, love scenes. So, is it more of an action film or is it more of an erotica? I don't know. I'll figure it out. But anyway, this tape is fairly rare. Okay, next. Next, next. This was sitting under the bed, uh, under the mattress from my previous video that I showed you. So this one I grabbed it. It's it um, uh, again I forget the the actors. I think there's Lo Lie, uh, Pearl Chang, uh, a bunch of really big names in this. Called uh, the title is My Blade, My Life. Uh, I think that's the correct title, and it's on the Oasis label, our beloved Oasis label. Um, so there you go. Okay, next. Waxwork, what wax? My God, my English is terrible. Waxwork. Uh, this also is quite rare. Um, to be honest, it's the first time I see this uh, this release. Again, Oasis, very beautiful. They always release some cool stuff. Uh, really great cover art and everything. So glad I found this. Okay, next uh, we're going again with some. Um, new school Hong Kong films maybe mid 80s uh, again with the actor I showed you before Michael Chan I'm gonna go with Michael Chan I'm not sure it's him um, <clears throat> from the previous movie the romantic comedy uh, so that was a pick I grabbed it previously for someone who wanted it so I thought maybe I should grab another piece for myself okay next um, this one is called rubbers of the sacred mountain uh, I mean, what's not to like about this cover art? It's gorgeous. It's really beautiful. Um, the copy is in pretty good shape. Uh, so that was a no-brainer. And it looks like a very early um, Man Manson? Man Manson? Manson video. Manson International. Uh, this was, I believe, the same label as Evil Dead, uh, so, but it looks like a very ra uh, rare, of course, an early release from this label. Anyways, that's it. Next one, I think this is a movie with Peter Cushing, Peter Cushing um, Legend of the Werewolf. Legend of the Werewolf, very, very cool release. Okay, next we have The Killing Edge, and this is on our beloved DNS label, and as they always do, cover art is just gorgeous, very simple title, uh, it's really cool, really cool release, yeah, I love DNS, okay, okay, next we have Forgotten Warrior, Forgotten Warrior. Uh, this was a Vietnam movie. I believe it's shot in the Philippines. Um, that's why I took it. I mean, everything like Vietnam films shot in the Philippines. What's not to like about them? So, yeah, I grabbed it. And I think it's the first time I see this cover. Otherwise, I would have picked that up uh, in the past. So, yeah. 
Voila. Okay, this is a big one. This is such a rare tape. Let me sit properly. Okay, so um, this one, uh, I have to check what it is exactly because I do have another tape. Let me show you right away. See? Whoops. Okay. See, they're using exactly the same image, uh, but they're both different films, I believe. Um, so we have a different name, director's name, different actors. I have to check what they are exactly. I believe this one is um, Amazon versus Superman versus the Amazon, like that Italian film, uh, just by looking at the images behind. Yeah, the three Superman versus the Amazon, something like that, which is so cool. And it's on the um, Gold Star label. And once again, Gold Star, if you don't know, is now LG. Yeah, Lucky Gold Star, that's why it's called LG. Uh, so this is on the Gold Star label, a beautiful artwork cover with some kind of Black Panther jumping in the back. <laughs> anyway, that's so cool. And this one, um, once again, if you have, if, if there's like any Koreans uh, watching this uh, video, maybe you can tell us what this title is exactly because um, it may not reflect the original title of the film because uh, if you don't know just like in any countries sometimes they um, change the title for something not related so um, but I'll, I'll look it up anyway really cool really cool with nice drawing yeah beautiful copy Okay, now let's move on. We have like two more piles here. So let's move on to the top of this pile. Here we have um, Dark Echoes. Dark Echoes, which is a... Um, it's kind of a giallo. Um, but it's like... I think it, it's a German production. Uh, made with... Is it Serbia? Or one of these um, East European countries anyways so it it's kind of um it's kind of a giallo although it's not italian so there you have it so anyways it's horror horror film beautiful copy by the way it's totally unfaded it's i would qualify this tape as near mint like totally near mint if not mint um the only reason i wouldn't qualify as it as mint is of course the plastic isn't like perfect but the sleeve is, and the tape, I believe, is near mint as well. So, there you go. Next one, this was um, this was in the back store. I grabbed it, I put it aside for a while, and now I decided to bring it back. Uh, it's called Cage Women. Cage Woman, sorry. And this tape uh, was actually quite moldy. Even the cover was moldy and everything, but I, I, I you know, I cleaned it up. Now it's fine. Um, but you can still see, like right here, uh, let me show you, see there's like some black mold that kind of uh, got through, but I clean all this, I clean all this, I clean like the back of the sleeve and the front of the sleeve here, uh, and the plastic, I changed the, uh, the box to something a bit cleaner as well. But this is so rare, I've never seen this before, and the cover is just gorgeous. Uh, so that's why I, I decided to buy it anyway. Because when you see stuff like that, you don't pass it. Okay, now... Uh, I've been told that this one is called Young Heroes. Uh, another uh, rare tape in Korea. Uh, the movie's not that rare, I believe. It's probably on YouTube somewhere. Someone uploaded it. Um, and it came out in a few countries, maybe. Uh, I think there's even a DVD of that, uh, but the Korean release, this one, is quite rare. And that was under the mattress, by the way. Really, really nice release. Okay, next we have something that I always thought was an Italian film, just because the guy looks like a typical Italian dude from <laughs> like movies from the early 80s, but that is Scorpion, it's an American film. Uh, action film. I, th I think I do remember seeing this on the shelves back when I was a kid. I think it was like released in the States on, and, and Canada on RCA. Um, but there you have it. This is the uh, the Korean release. 
and um, it's under this weird label Whoop, let me just focus it's under this label which I don't know what that is I'll have to look it up but it's the first time I see this label quite interesting okay next nothing really special because you, you've seen it in one of my previous videos but this is the burning uh, what's different is that there are two releases of the burning this one is the re-release and as you can see it says it's uncut because the first release was cut uh, and it had like a different artwork on the cover so this was released I think in the late 90s or very early 2000 like no later than 2001 or 2 uh, but it's still the rarest of the two releases okay next uh, this is a another Korean erotica from the late 80s very early 90s um, I used to have it I gave it to my friend like a very long time ago and I kind of regretted it because I wanted it back there's I think a part two of this which I have but I didn't have this part one so saw it and I grabbed it next uh, we have vigilante or vigilat latte that joke sorry uh, from DNS so this is again a beautiful DNS release um, a bit of sun fade on the spine but this is uh, again a tape I've never seen before so I picked it up next we have uh, Nightmare on Helm Street 3, three? Um, nothing special once again I had this I believe I had it on my shelf right there let me zoom in Let's zoom out. I think I have this. Or maybe I don't. Yeah, I think I don't have any more Nightmare on Helm Streets left. Okay, maybe they're in some of my boxes. Anyways, uh, the reason I picked up this one, I would have left it there though, but it's uh, it's in very good shape. Um, and some of the Nightmare on Helm Street films are hard to find in good shape. Especially the first one, I've never found it near me. Just I, like I've never found um, a Friday the 13th one near me. Never. It always had some fade or something. Anyway, part three. That was in the bag. Next we have this one, which I totally forgot, forgot the title again. Um, I had it in the past, uh, found it like two or three times, but every time I found this tape it was moldy as hell. It was like beyond collectible. This one just had like very bad sun fade, but it's in good shape overall. So I would say that this is a good copy, considering it's hard to find in good shape. Okay, next, everyone's favorite, Phantasm. Um, well, I do have part one, part three, uh, part two, part two and part three. Part one is the hardest to find. Um, it's been a couple of years since I found one. And today, I mean, last weekend, I found a part one. So this is Phantasm part one. It's in pretty good shape, uh, very slight fade on the spine but overall great quality very happy about this one uh, this is just some Korean erotica once again nothing special that was just uh, for me and this is another Korean erotica um, <laughs> just gotta love the guys the guys hairstyle right there that's so cool okay so anyway that is vintage Korean erotica for you guys very funny Okay, what's special about this one? Uh, this is uh, yet another Indonesian film I found. Uh, the Indonesian films released in Korea, you, you, can, you can count them on your fingers. There's about a dozen of them. Um, and they're all very hard to find. Honestly, I may have found like one or two or even three copies of half of those titles. The other half, only one copy and that was it. This one's no exception. This, it's the first time I see a copy of this. It's the first time. So anyway, I just checked and I saw like um, Barry Prima and I was like, oh my God, this is Indonesian. And you can tell a little bit by the screen caps on the back. So this is an, uh, this is an Indonesian film. 
It's called To Burn the Sun. So there you have it. Next, this is an Italian crime film, police film, mafia film. Napoli Camorra S-F-I-D-A. Uh, it's probably not the title, but anyway, I, I looked that one up before because I had it in my collection. I sold it to a friend. Um, but anyway, this is the second time I find it. And this was under the bed, under the mattress. Very happy to find this again. Next, we have um, another... Vietnam film, I probably filmed the Philippines, Final Reprisal, um, I have to look it up, I forgot what it is exactly, but anyway, cool cover art, kind of a rare tape, so I grabbed it, alright, now we're talking, Ilsa, this is the um, Tigress of Siberia, uh, this one is quite hard to find, especially in good shape, uh, especially unfaded. It is slightly faded, as you can see it's a little bit like pinkish and it should be red. Uh, but this is actually a very, very good looking copy. Um, it doesn't get as nice as this. Uh, I think I, do, I did have like one copy before which I sold, which was near me. I believe if it was faded, it was very slightly faded, like almost no fade. Uh, but this one is an actually like a very, very good looking copy. So there you have it. Now let's move on to the final pile. So we have like about a dozen tapes right there. Let's jump in. The Railway MV Murders. Uh, <laughs> the Railway Murders. A very beautiful looking copy once again almost no sun fade if not no sun fade really cool next this is another Korean erotica um, that is that qualifies as a we call it a folk arrow focus folklore um, they have that old subgenre within the erotica genre in Korea and that was a famous one back in the late 80s very very early 90s okay next here we have um, counter destroy maybe you might ask what the hell is this well this is robo vampire I do have another copy of that let me just grab it okay, okay it was on my shelf with a more recognizable cover maybe more beautiful cover right there uh, so this is from one um, company and this one is from another label. So two different labels, same film. As you can see, Robo Vampire. There you go. They're both pretty cool. Although this one is using the original artwork on the front, this one has some kind of hutch pudge thing going on, which I don't really like and I don't like the title counter destroy whatever robo vampire is much cooler but hey two different versions okay okay let's move on uh, we're almost done uh, this one I forgot the title uh, I mean when you see a cover like this you pick it up it's just too funny too cool too cool for school and it's a DNS beautiful oh dr. alien there you go dr. alien Okay, next, Korean Erotica, nothing special. Next, oh, this is pretty rare, actually very rare. Uh, it's called Black Magic with Buddha. Um, I knew there was like a Korean release, I've never found it. I've only seen like a little screenshot on the internet before of this cover, but never found the tape before, it's the very first time. <coughs> and this, <coughs> sorry. This version is in very good condition, so very happy about this. Okay, next we have the hero defeating Japs. Well, okay, <laughs> why not Japanese, but Japs is kind of a, almost like a slur or... Anyway, um, beautiful copy by the way. Um, yeah, rare film, uh, rare tape, great copy. What's not to like about this? 
Okay, this is this is perhaps my biggest, um, most proud tape from everything I've found last week. Uh, this is absolutely rare, and I've never seen that before. I didn't even know it existed, so I'm super proud about this tape. Puma Man, yes, <laughs> the terrible Puma Man. And wow, just look at this. I mean, this is such a beautiful, 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 beautiful release. Uh, and guess what? It's on DNS. Only the best is on DNS, right? So there you have it. Oh, a little screen cap from Inner Space. I don't know if you remember that 80s movie. Uh, anyway, some of the screen caps probably don't have anything to do with the film. But anyway, hey, it's Puma Man on Korean tape. This is so rare. Okay, next we have Code of Honor. Code of Honor. Uh, looks like a... Uh, I, I'm not too familiar with this one. Just I like the cover art. I grabbed it and it has a ninja on it. So, I mean, what's not to like about this? <laughs> Some action. Two guys falling. Car in flames. Hey, come on. Okay, next. Oh, this is again something I wouldn't say super rare because it used to be kind of possible to find this tape back in the days. Uh, but I would say the last time I grabbed this was for um, a Swiss collector. Um, at the time, and the type. At the time, the tape was kind of possible to find. I think I I was able to find like two copies. Like two stores had it. Price-wise, it wasn't too cheap because uh, this is fairly rare. It's like one of those like giant monsters, uh, Taiwanese film, like fantasy stuff. It's really cool. Um, but the thing is, the last copy I found for that Swiss dude, um, the Swiss collector, happened to be like back in 2009 or something, or maybe 2010. So it's been like 10 years since I've seen this tape. So it tells you how rare it is. Uh, so I was super happy to find a copy like this. And I mean, in the wild, it's just unbelievable. Uh, and and I mean, it does have some sun fade on the, I mean, right here, like going up to the spine, but nothing very, very dramatic. And the previous copy I found of this was in about the same state, you know. Uh, although this one is very clean, I mean, um, sharp and it doesn't have any mold or anything, so very happy about this. Okay, next we're going into the Godfrey Ho territory. Uh, this one is called Crime Target. Um, Royal Thai, yeah. So, <laughs> as you can see, another, another movie from Godfrey Ho mixing up scenes from different films and pretty cool to find this in Korea I mean that's really nice okay still in the bottom of the barrel type of stuff uh, another ninja film here don't ask me what it is I don't know I saw ninja on the tape and I was like okay that goes in the pile so there you have it one cool ninja film it does have some moldy stuff here I cleaned it as best as I could overall is nice okay and finally um, this one sorry I finished not with a bang but just with something a bit maybe more lame but uh, this is a Korean film this actor used to be very very if not extremely popular in Korea his name is Lee Tae-gun Lee Tae um, sorry for my terrible pronunciation and he used to be like in a whole bunch of film, like you name it, all the genres. He did like all the film genres in Korea. And this guy with the fedora, like uh, character was uh, something recurring. Like it kept coming back in a lot of films uh, in the late 70s, early 80s, up to the mid 80s. So he was like a huge actor in Korea. So anyway, I found this tape, never seen it before. And I was like, hey, let's grab this one. Looks cool. Got action love scenes everything Korean film so there you have it guys uh, total of about almost 50 tapes 
Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you did please put a like and share this tape I share this tape share this video and I'll see you very soon since I'm on vacation officially uh, and I wish you all a very happy holiday Merry Christmas and see you very soon <music>